I'm going to call the meeting of the Plan Commission for the City of Hudson to order on February 25th. Uh, we do have a quorum, including myself, so we are right at it. Um, so we will move and proceed on with the agenda. Um, number two is discussion possible action on the February 4th meeting minutes. Any corrections? Move to approve. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Nay. Number three, we don't have a public hearing, do we? Nope. Thank you. And going right to four and the new business discussion, possible action on final development plans for the public utility storage building at 1201 Livingston Road, City of Hudson Public Utilities. Great. Good evening, everyone. So our public utilities department is looking to construct a vehicle storage building at their current utility site at 1201 Livingstone Road. Uh, the building will be used to store the city's jet truck, utility pickup trucks, and a few trailers that are being displaced from the wastewater plant project, which we'll get to after this one. Um, it'll be about 7,200 square feet in size and located on the southeast corner of the property. Um, staff is recommending approval of the final development plans with the listed conditions. Kip from our public works department is here to, or, or to utilities department, sorry, to answer any questions if you guys have any. Is any part of the building to be heated? Uh, yeah, like we discussed last time, the entire building will be heated. <laughs> yes. State your name and uh, title. Kip Peters, Utility Director, City of Hudson. Thank and, you. And what form of heat will that be, may I ask? It'll be uh, gas or, or uh, overhead um, radiant. Not in floor radiant? No, overhead radiant. Okay. And then all metal structure, basically a pole building? All metal structure, yeah, metal metal frame, uh, metal outside, uh, metal inside, uh, with insulation. So okay, thank you. Yep. No real office space. No office space at all. Strictly based storage. Just basically a storage, yeah. And, and color scheme to match. Color the scheme will match the existing, existing that, are, that are up there. Okay. I will move to approve as presented with any conditions the city has on that. Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thanks, Kip. Thank you. Item B, discussion possible action on the concept and final development plans and downtown design review for the wastewater treatment plant expansion, City of Hudson Public Utilities. So we are looking to get this package project kind of all approved tonight includes concept final development plans and a downtown design review since the project does fall within our downtown overlay district um, <clears throat> they're planning to update their wastewater treatment plant in in 2020 this year to address aging conditions and capacity issues to extend the life of the facility that currently exists there um, some of the improvements include modifying the existing garage to construct a new pretreatment building, a new UV disinfection building, partial demolition of chlorine contact tank, updates to equipment and structures in existing control buildings, sludge conditioning building, anoxic aeration tanks, and final clarifiers. Um, in regards to like the downtown design review standards portion of this review, um, they do meet all, all of our code as far as like the color of the building goes, materials that they're using, which will be like precast concrete with inlaid brick columns and translucent window panels. So that being said, staff is recommending approval of concept, final development plans, and the downtown design review with listed conditions. I have one question, if I may. Sure. A lot of people, and this is, you can take this as a joke or you can take it as a serious comment, or you can take it a lot of different ways. You come into Hudson, <laughs> and the first thing you, you, you notice about Hudson is <laughs> you get a whiff. Is anything being done? The odor, con the, the the odor, odor control, control is, yes, sir. The odor control is being updated, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. So it's. We can't guarantee, but hopefully it's better. Right. No, no, no. I know it's that. Better. But I so, mean, yeah, new order control I've is... I've heard that. I don't know if you've heard new, that. Yeah. New order control is going in. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to be lightly treading on it, not... It, it, you know, you got to remember what you're dealing with <clears throat> down there. Um, obviously, as we all know, or we can we can understand, that is not the ideal location, um, you know, with, with the growth that Hudson has had. But that was here 
way before any of us were here. And way before the freeway went through. Um, and way before the freeway went through. So at that time, it was the ideal location <clears throat> for a wastewater treatment plant. Um, you know, we're, we're definitely going to be doing our best. That's one thing. Um, SEH is here also who did, did the design and everything on this. So if you do have any questions from them, they'd be more than happy to answer it. But um, one thing that, that we, or me personally, I did, you know, what, through some of our first meetings was stress the importance of that site location. Um, this needs to be, it, it needs to be welcoming to the city or, or you know not seen um, things like that so you know we took that into account to try to match up um, what's currently there with some of the structures that are stained with the brickwork um, colors you know things like that so uh, the, the outside we're we are planning on painting the entire, you know, anything that's seen outside will be painted um, just to try to bring it up to, you know, a, a little bit better standard than than when you're pulling into town now. So a couple other questions just on um, I'm repeating maybe some of this from other meetings, but to other people that haven't heard of it before. What, what effect will that have on the local taxpayers? Will that cause rate raise, rate increases? It, will what and then twofold question. What does it do to the capacity of the plant as far as 10, 20 years from now as part of this redo, increasing the capacity so it will buy the next 10, 20 years, whatever amount of time that we think that it would last for that. Okay, so first part of the question is, is the rates. Um, we are currently, we have a company uh, called Trilogy that we are working with that is doing a rate study on this. So we have an anticipation about what this is gonna cost. Um, and they are actually conducting a, a feasibility study style to see what, how and what this is going to affect our rates. Um, we are going out for a clean, uh, clean water fund loan. We've already been approved for that loan. Um, we are actually getting that loan at a 1.6% at a interest rate, which is just fantastic. Um, we haven't seen that, or at least I have never seen something that low in, in a long, long time. Jeez. So. So, so we are going up for a clean water fund. So obviously we will have to repay that. Um, it'll be a 20 year note. Uh, we'll be figuring out how we're gonna repay that, you know, between user fees, uh, connection fees, different things like that, that we'll be looking at. Um, the second part of your question is, is relating to capacity. We are not increasing capacity of the wastewater treatment plant, okay? Currently we, we can do 2.2 million a day. Um, we this is basically an up i don't want to call it an upgrade the pumps everything it's been 22 23 years since anything's been done down there so the pumps are tired you know the SCADA systems are tired everything's just tired so it's 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 basically a facelift of this of the stuff that runs 24 7 that deals with some of the worst material you know that that we deal with um, so we are not increasing capacity now with that said we have done studies uh, system-wide studies that show that the 2.2 million can handle 25,000 people, okay, or out to 2040. So the 2040 that you keep hearing is is an industry standard that says, you know, if we if we do our our rehab now in 2020. The typical life expectancy of a wastewater treatment plant is 20 years. So we anticipate in 20 years, we're gonna have to, you know, the pumps are gonna be tired again. The ski, everything's gonna be tired again. So we're gonna have to look at it at that point again. <clears throat> um, now we, with the 2.2 million, or the 2.2 million a day, currently we do about 1.5 to 1.6 million a day. So the, the feasibility studies have shown that we can, we can sustain at our current permit out to about 25,000 people. Now, we also have North Hudson in there. So currently we are sitting about 17,000, you know, 18,000 people. Uh, if you include the population of Hudson and North Hudson who also uses that facility, you know, so we've got about 7,000 people to go. But when you say Once, that, aren't those plants not designed to be run at full capacity? You say 2.2 million. Aren't they designed to be run at 80% capacity, 80 to 90 in that range, and that's considered wide open? Or can they run at 100%? It actually, so the 2.2 is kind of the average. <clears throat> um, 
That's a good question. So there's kind of two general ratings on the permit. There's the average flow rate, the 2.2, but then it's also got a peak flow rate of 4.8. So like oh. the spring um, peak flows and uh, when there's I and I uh, flows that come into the system. So it actually can can handle up to 4.8. Well, I'm just trying to so, figure out what yep. does that number mean? Yeah. Yep. Well, mind you, they, they put this in, in play, and correct me if I'm wrong, at dealing with all the, uh, off of the comprehensive plan and all the potential development and the capacity that is going into right. that. And they've done just tremendous jobs in the, in the last 10 years at improving the efficiency down there and extending us way beyond what you ever thought we were going to be able to do 20 years ago. Right. Well, you guys have done a great job down there. So the jury's still out, though, on a rate adjustment, if you want to call it that. Well, you know, again, back to the rate to the rates. We will. There's going to be an increase. There's no doubt about it. Okay. Um, there's no doubt about that. Um, okay. You know, with with the with the the borrowing that we're going to have to do, we do have to pay that back somehow. Um, you know, we've got other projects coming up. State Highway 35, <laughs> for example, in 2021, which is going to be a very expensive for the utilities, uh, for water and wastewater and things of that nature. So, but we at this point do not know exactly what that number is going to be and i don't even want to speculate what that will be um you know that that'll be something once these studies come back this project this project will actually take about 16 to 18 months so this is going to be a long drawn out process um you know we're actually having some more meetings on the financial part of this uh you know, early part of march um, to get that stuff all figured out and straightened out um, once that happens obviously it does go to city council you know for approvals and different things like that so but it's also very purposeful to beat the project to be done there yeah yeah we the original plan was to do the wastewater treatment plant in 2021 um, until the state came in and said that they're tearing up second street in 2021 so that that kind of moved us moved us back a year to, to this year to 2020 um, so we can get most of our work done that needs to be done um, and once the state comes in we should pretty much be inside you know out of the way the bigger machinery the buildings will be built so you know we're not going to have traffic issues and things of that nature so thank you i just want the public to be aware of you know the, the consequences of this and what it's yep. doing for the city and all of that and that's the intent it, you of know it's it, it's questions. it's always it's always sad or you know when when rates do have to go up yeah. um but it's a necessity i mean that plant is at its life end there's just nothing more we can do with that i think people aren't blind enough not to expect rate increases it depends on how much are they right you know, I mean, if it's called within the inflation guidelines, you, you probably wouldn't hear a peep. Right. If it's beyond that, then you start to hear different levels of response. Okay. Yeah, and we won't know any of that, that until way. until we get the studies back. I would so. tend to disagree with you, Fred, because on our, at the council level, we're getting calls on every rate crease that's coming. Well, the, the problem that the utilities is well, facing fuel were taxed out. is how long it was without an increase. Yeah, you know the sewer the sewer rates have been increased in the past couple of years, um, you know, minimal. Um, but before that, you know, there there was years and years and years and years and years that nothing. that nothing was done. Um, so, you know, sometimes sometimes that's a good thing, but sometimes that's a bad thing too. Well, when, when you're, you're not talking in relation to inflation to catch up right all of a sudden it passes it well i i was just given the a basic human nature response Absolutely. randy you know corrected me obviously that you know I, uh, people i think are feeling that we're being taxed very heavily right now and when you say rates are going to go up and things like that that raises some eyebrows right and i guess i feel it's our duty to let people know that hey this is potentially well, coming with our approval for sure because we're opening the gate totally agree because yeah. we're in a, in a situation with the water rate increase on second meters so it's all germane and bringing this up now and a rate increase now is kind of on top of that is going to be an interesting but no forward thank, thank you for the information yeah. and, and i i I'm, I'm, i don't mean to be harmful or anything like that well it's no just, it's it, it is what it is right. i mean there's no there's nothing anybody's trying to hide or 
not say it just it is what it is you know and you got to understand that um your when it comes to a municipality your most your most expensive <coughs> and probably your most important um, depending, I, I think it's the most important utility. Um, obviously, you know, water and wastewater, in, in my opinion, are the, the most important thing to a, to, a, to a city. Some people might disagree, but I think streets or police or fire or something like that. But, um, you know, the one thing that you do have to understand is that a utility reconstruction, utility projects are very expensive. You know, when you want that, when you want that luxury of having water and having sanitary sewer, um, it does cost money to do things. I will leave you with the last comment that we make to other developers that have been at the gate to Hudson as you're one of the first things people will see make it nice. The, like I said earlier, that, that's one thing that I definitely stressed to, to SEH right out of the gate was that, you know, we want this to look nice, um, you know, and, and that's why we are, we are that you've seen the renditions, um, what, what you're looking at. Um, there is the, basically on them renditions, what we're looking at is the bottom rendition. There's two different styles there. There was, there was two colors on it. We're actually going with the single color on that. Okay. So just to clarify that. The past is getting, is catching up with us as Kurt alluded to as far as costs. And no, what no, we no, have to I, fix. I know that. We probably still We've have. We've neglected have, enough stuff and it's finally haunting us. We probably still have wood. <laughs> storm we storm. absolutely do. Yeah. I haven't seen wood yet. Oh, I thought we have we, we have water we have water mains from 1888 mm -hmm. that we're still using today. So, yeah. you know, there are some old water mains. <laughs> that's for sure. Thank you very much. Yep. Any other questions on anything? I will move to approve with all terms and conditions that asked for by the by, I guess our by Papa here in the city that they would be adhered to. Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thanks, Kip. All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, item C, a discussion possible action on the concept and final development plans for site improvements at 2401 Crestview Drive, Quick Trip, Inc. Is there a representative here? Okay. Um, I'll introduce it sure. as Matt heads up. Um, so Quick Trip has applied for some site improvements at their 2401 Crestview Drive station store. Um, they are looking to add a fifth set of pumps. They currently have four <coughs> sets, as well as move and update their underground storage tanks. Um, along with this, they will also <coughs> be um, changing the south Gateway Boulevard access to a right only. That's the one that's closest to the lights. Um, as Badger Drive and Hudson Center has developed, we've seen a lot of congestion at that intersection where people are trying to get out of Quick Trip. So it will be a right and only, and people will exit Quick Trip on the north side, um, farther away from the lights. So um, Matt is here with Quick Trip if you guys have any specific questions. What's that going to do to the capacity of that area and, and potential traffic? I mean, that's already a crowded spot. It Very sounds crowded. like you're you're addressing some of it with your entrance and entrance, but yep. um, <clears throat> with the noted stacking that's going on there now, you know, at light intervals and all that stuff, will let's say you're adding 20% capacity to that gas station by adding a, a fifth island. You know, that, I mean, that's 20%. Will that cause and is the city satisfied that there will be no problems generated by the added volume that you probably will experience? Yeah, I'm not sure. <clears throat> um, I mean, that's kind of a bad spot, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I mean, yes, it's tough. I mean, I think the improvements to doing the right in, um, right in only, are, are going to be a benefit to that intersection. Um, we're going to move the underground storage tanks, um, which will um, open up that the, the driveway to the uh, to the west so when the fuel transports in there um, you know it should create better traffic flow there um, this site's you know one of our top pumpers in the company um, we, we take a lot of fuel deliveries typically uh, one to two a day so it transports in there a lot uh, we're going to increase the storage capacity of the underground storage tanks that we have there so by moving them and increasing the storage capacity should alleviate uh, trucks coming, you know, coming in and out. Um, so right now, the tanks are to the west of the pumps. 
Uh, that is accurate, yes. Okay. What will that do with your, I'm not going to call it sharing, but you know, you and McDonald's are kind of yep. on the yep. same ball field. I think that driveway is big enough in the way we have the tank set um, in there. Tra traffic will still be able to get around the tanker when it's delivered. And that won't impair anybody else's in and out what you're doing, or will it improve it? Yeah, I'm not sure. It could improve it. It could. I mean, I think it could. I think, again, by closing, uh, <coughs> alleviating that congestion um, by doing a right in only on that entrance, I think it'll help. I think it'll help things. Well, getting in isn't the problem. It's getting out. Getting out. out. Yep. Um, and now and we won't be able to get out once you've pulled in. Correct. And we won't be able to get out. We'll be able to have the two exits exits to the back of the building. I, I will tell you there'll probably be some. Uh, we're going to have to study the uh, exit of Badger and Gateway, and probably have more uh, traffic control of some sort up there, from a public safety perspective on what, how to get that in and out and flowing better. Because you're going to route everything out that way, it's going to get exasperated. So there, that's something to be aware of. So, in other words, what you're saying, no matter what we do here today, it will still go before that scrutiny in those eyes. It, it's going to have to because I don't know what. Well, I want it to. Before we would, I mean, because I don't know what's going to do to that. It's already uncontrolled by what one stop sign, two stop signs, and it's a, it kind of can be just one. Just one. It, you know, it's a fight. Coming, or, 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 I, I, I'm not sure about leaving the Quitra property and the McDonald's property, I would assume so. And then I'm not sure about coming from the uh, west to the east. There, there's still hesitation leaving your property, you know, turning left because some cities draw lines right in the road, you know, follow this. And I, I wish we would do that up there so people had some direction as to what to do. But they come out and they're uncertain what to do, when to turn. We and so they actually stop that. and then nobody moves. And so I agree with Randy that something needs to be done up there. I mean, whatever, but I just don't want to say, I mean, you're within your parameters, it's your property and all that to maximize it. And hey, I'm all for it. It's just it can't cause us problems at the same time. Right. So It just has to be monitored. I'm not looking to stop it either, but we're gonna have to address that intersection mm -hmm. through the city. And so are you replacing tanks or just updating and adding capacity? Uh, replacing the, the current underground storage tanks are pushing 30 years old. Um, okay. As an industry, 30 years is... is They're double wall tanks? The, the new tanks are, are double wall, mandated by federal and state regulation. The current uh, underground storage tanks, one is double wall. The other, uh, I believe there's other, another three are single wall. So well, that's a welcome change. Yep, and the uh, underground piping um, is a better is better piping than um, what's what's been put in. Does there. that does that affect water drainage or anything like that up in that area at all? I don't think so. Yeah. When do you anticipate a start date? Um, our goal was to uh, <coughs> uh, mid April, um, pending you know typically you know we see a, a oh. just a, in, a company wide increase in the summer with with traffic schools oh. out. So you'll be shut down, I assume. Our store, we, we would probably more like we will have we will keep the store open right. and we'll have some parking, but the gas will be shut down as we replace the canopy. Yes, and the canopy is the same age as thirty years old, and the the canopy sizes. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I believe the canopy length is the same. The width is going to be just a little bit wider, and uh, I'm not sure if this used to, it used to be an auto stop store. And I can't remember if that if what they were branded, whether it was Shell or at what point in time. But their island spacing used to be um, quite a bit wider, or we'll condense that. So we'll that's we'll keep the same canopy footprint, but increase our dispenser. I'll move for approval with all city conditions and uh, things, but with traffic to be looked at and. Uh, as I guess uh, one of them to put it on there, and other than that, I. Well, I want to be clear. So. Was that I know you They're mentioned public safety. This has been reviewed by our engineer, and he didn't feel any concerns mm -hmm. other than suggesting right. the write-in. Oh, my well, comment is. Well, then I, that was directed at Randy's comment. My so. comment is to observe it, and then if there's an issue. I'm just being upfront and starting it early that okay. we may have to address something at that badger. There's going to be an issue. And I'm okay with that. So I, then I change, I will recommend for approval with all terms and conditions.
traffic to be looked at as necessary. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. To go to council for the March ninth ninth meeting. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, number five, old business. Discussion, possible action on neighborhood notification mailing distance. Yes, let me get organized. Okay, so I know at our last meeting, um, we had kind of discussed the community development department's procedure for mailing distances. Um, this would be for public hearings, for um, neighborhood meetings, which just recently have started to come in as that new ordinance is being applied to new projects, as well as any subdivisions, um, which would be plats and certified survey maps. <coughs> um, currently, we mail a distance of 300 feet. We kind of discussed that last time, and you guys had asked that we do a little research to look at some neighboring communities, similar size. Um, the second page in your packet kind of shows what other communities do. Um, I would say a conclusion to what staff found was that the city and our department currently has the same mailing distance or greater at that 300 feet than other um, neighboring cities of similar size. Um, only one other city had a larger um, distance. That was Cottage Grove at 500 feet. And for the most part, um, we kind of were more extensive in our mailings. Um, we do sometimes, we mail for more diff types of applications beyond just rezoning or um, subdivision. So we basically go above and beyond <coughs> what other communities do. No, no, thanks for checking so, that out. That's nice yeah. to know that. It gives a nice layout of what some other, you know, New Richmond, River Falls, Cottage Grove, Forest Lake, and Menominee are doing so. Do you really don't need us to do anything? Um, only if you guys would recommend that we <coughs> want to change the distance. Um, say leave it the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I mean, it's, it's not, bro it's proof not that broken. It's not good. broken. Yeah. Leave it, let yeah. it go. It, yeah. it was an original. Um, recommendation by a, cons a CH consultant. It seems to be a good distance that lines up with city blocks. Um, so you're not kind of <coughs> having a block and kind of having to, you know, you don't want one neighbor getting it and the next neighbor not. Sure. So you gotta kind of fit it in a block area. Um, so it seems to work out well. The one thing to understand is that mailings aren't perfect. Right. You get them back sometimes. Um, they're based on tax um, information, so we do our best to get them out. Um, and they just support the public hearing notices that are in the paper and online already. And I was going to say they're already publicly posted, and so yeah. I think it worked great with like the pickleball association thing. I mean, I think did you guys send letters out to those folks? Yep. So we <coughs> great. Yeah. yeah, we help Public Works kind of do the same kind of distance for them. So that was probably about 300 feet as well. Yeah. Good. Any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on to item six, communications, items for future agendas, a short-term home rental codes amendment update. Yeah, we don't have an update. Okay. <laughs> so staff is still working on it with the city attorney, kind okay. of okay. getting through some very last details before we bring it forward. So we'll have it on our next agenda? Hopefully. I think so. And uh, number seven item. We'll do adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed. Thank you, everybody.